Good evening, all, and welcome. Tonight, for your listening pleasure, I have a collection of scary stories, which are sure to leave you terrified. So, for now, get comfortable, and let the darkness take control. This story happened to my sister a few years ago. She and her now husband are house sitting for my brother-in-law's uncle. The uncle is old and starting to lose it. He rents out a basement suite, and a nice lady lives downstairs. She cleans the house when she's there, but he wanted my brother-in-law to come check on things and feed his old cat once in a while. Okay, so first day they go to house it, and they can get in, but can't find the cat to make sure it's okay. My sister has cats and know they like to hide when they're dying, so they are all worried and are looking everywhere for this cat. In all the rooms, under the beds, and everything, even check with the lady downstairs, and she hasn't seen it. So my sister opens up the closet in the spare bedroom and is looking around stuff on the floor, moves a few of the things, and sees a set of feet on the ground in the closet, with clothes blocking anything above the feet. The feet have nicely painted toenails and look human, but she assumes it was a doll or something. They look in a few more places, and all of a sudden the cat is in the middle of the living room, just hanging out. So they lock the deadbolt and leave. My sister and her boyfriend go out for dinner and a movie, and she can't stop thinking about the feet and how real they looked. My sister had started dating her boyfriend fairly recently, and didn't want to seem crazy, so she didn't bring it up. But a few hours into the night, she decides she needs to tell him. He decides that it's probably a doll, but offers to go back and check anyway. When they arrive, my sister will only stay on the patio because she's scared, which makes him realize it must be something serious. They go to get in the door, but the deadbolt is now unlocked and the handle is locked. He thinks there must be someone in there. At the door, there is a fireplace. So once he's in there, he grabs the sharp poker stick from the fireplace tools, and starts to sneak towards the closet. He opens the closet and sees the same set of feet with painted toenails on the floor. He pokes it lightly with the fire stick, and the toes scrunch up. He proceeds to smack the foot as hard as he can with the sharp stick and yells, "Get out of here!" And out comes a lady in her mid thirties holding the cat and a can of coke. Turns out she was friends with the basement tenant. When she became homeless, the friend let her stay until she found out she was addicted to crack, and started leaving drugs around the house, and had shady people coming into the house, so she got kicked out. Somehow she got a key to upstairs, and had been staying there while the uncle was gone. Police were called, and she was arrested. I was in my early twenties and lived alone in an apartment complex in a rougher part of Houston, Texas. It sat alongside an elementary school, which helped, but it still wasn't an area that I would go walking around in at night. It was a leaky apartment, and I do have a mold allergy. I also have a history of extremely morbid nightmares and night terrors, paired with an overactive and obsessive imagination. However, this was before. Those became routine issues for me. I did not partake in drugs of any kind, including alcohol, during this time, but I can remember when the nightmares started. It was the same one over and over again. It was always in the first-person view, like from my own eyes. So I don't know what I looked like, and I also wasn't in control because it played out a bit like a movie. But I was in an empty apartment and jumped by a dark figure. Stabbed multiple times, and I distinctly remember staring down bloody blue jeans and warm white tennis shoes as I'm being dragged, leaving a bloody trail on the beige carpet, as well as the strange squishing the knife made while it went in and out erratically, almost pulling bits of flesh out of my chest with each stab. I was tied up and wrapped up, and eventually popped up against a wall. Once the dark figure turned the light. And shut the door. I woke up every single time. I have a specific way of dreaming, and this was not it. 
I would wake up deeply disturbed and unable to fall back asleep. Once I was able to fall asleep, I would have it just once or twice more. I figured it was stress, having just started a new job and also having just ended a toxic relationship that was causing some residual drama in my life. About four or five days in, the nightmares were still occurring. They were getting worse in the sense that I would wake up holding my chest, almost able to feel the stabbing in my dream. It was at the point that I started feeling a dark presence in the room with me, to the point of being too afraid to get up and turn on my light or leave the room at all, as if I were being watched. This is the point at which I started talking to my friends about it. It was affecting my sleep, and I was showing up to work extremely tired, vocalizing my bizarre experience to people close around me, and even to my new management. Around the sixth or seventh day, I was feeling a dark presence constantly in the apartment, even in the daytime. I also moved into the living room and had started sleeping on my futon since I had started waking up from those nightmares and seeing a dark form against my bedroom wall, about six feet tall with no features, just a black mass. And hearing a masculine, get me out, repeatedly somewhere in between sleep and waking. It was also by this time that there was a smell growing in my apartment. It was faint and hard to describe, like a pile of rotting fish mixed in with dog crap and the nasty sweetness of old fruit, but faint. I thought it was mold or the common sewer problems in the area, or perhaps a bad tenant. Samson was a kitten at the time, and would often appear spooked, all puffed up, hissing and running out of the bedroom. I thought it was normal kitten behavior, like he was practicing his little lion skills. I didn't think it was strange how he would sleep against my chin under the covers with me. This still may have been the case, but the behavior was unusual. The people close around me encouraged me to seek professional help at this point. I wasn't sleeping and experiencing fluctuations in my mood and performance. I was also feeling depressed. I would jokingly call what I was going through as a morbid quarter-life crisis before finally agreeing to talk to a professional about it. The first and only place I went was to my general doctor. He concluded that I was experiencing generalized anxiety under tremendous stress, and I was provided with some resources and referrals for therapy and a more thorough assessment, and followed my appointment with a 10-hour shift at work. When I got home from work, there were emergency lights all over my parking lot. I noted caution tape along the stairway, opposite of the side of my apartments as I drove around to my parking spot. I had to maneuver around a new station van to get up the stairs into my apartment. I caught words like murder and unidentified victim before retreating inside. Since most of the activity was on the other side of my building, I sat outside on my balcony to watch and listen, but didn't gather much. I slept well that night. No night terrors, no nightmares. It was surprising, since I was experiencing anxiety over what I had just gathered the night before. But I was also exhausted, and maybe meeting with a professional had eased my mind. I woke up by a phone call from a close friend who had messaged me the night before. She was familiar with the troubles I had been having, and was freaking out with details she had gathered about the incident. An unidentifiable male suspect, drug trafficker, that had taken residency in the apartment, reportedly a drug stop, per the news, was found stabbed to death in an apartment closet, tied up and wrapped in trash bags, lower jaw removed. The body was found after the tenants living directly below reported a strong foul odor and fluid leaking through their ceiling, which was actually blood. As for the closet the body was found in, it shares the same wall as my bedroom that I was seeing the dark personage on. For the sake of the time, I'll just say that everything immediately returned to normal. I was sleeping again, and the feeling around the apartment was much lighter. Due to tenants' laws and such, I was allowed out of my lease early due to the recent events. It was an offer I took without question, prompting me to move to a slightly less crappy apartment a few miles away. 
I have tried to explain this logically to myself for years, only sharing it with a select few people over a long time. I figured that it was some sort of chemical reaction, some primal trigger, the smell of a decomposing body causing something to fire off in my brain that there was danger. But the specifics of my nightmares, the dark personage against the wall at night, and the overall sense of someone watching me, are things that I still cannot explain. I was about 12, when I woke up and saw this seven-year-oldish kid, kind of squatting in my closet. He was super pale, and had dark hair, but his eyes were bright, not glowing or anything, but just brighter than the rest of his face. And they stood out. It freaked me out, so I called my mum and hid under the covers until she got there. When I looked, he was gone. Fast forward a few nights. I wake up and he's there again. Same spot, just sitting there staring. He never moved, he just stared. I didn't want to call my mum again, so I just shut my eyes and went back to sleep. After it happened one more time, I got fed up and decided to close my closet. Well, that night I woke up and it opened. This was a stiff, sliding door that you really had to yank to get open, so there's no way it just slipped open. It was probably about two to three inches open, and all I could see was one of his eyes staring back at me. I told my mom, but she didn't believe me, so I just stopped opening my eyes when I woke up at night. Luckily, we moved out not too long after, but an unrelated incident also happened around the same time. I got pretty mild sleep paralysis. I couldn't move, but it only lasted a few seconds, maybe 10, and I didn't have the sitting on your chest kind of thing that others have reported. However, I do remember seeing a weird shadow in the corner of my room and it scared me. Once I was able to move, I pointed my flashlight at it, but it was gone. Woke up again that night, because my side hurt, but I didn't really think anything of it. I wake up in the morning and there's a handprint-sized bruise across the side of my ribs. I still can't explain it away, and it helped convince my mum that there really was some kind of weird stuff going on. I don't know if I believe in ghosts or any of that, but I cannot find a logical explanation for this. I was six years old when my family of six moved into the brown house. As kids, we always named our houses by color or location. It was easier because we moved a lot. The house seemed perfect at first. All four of us kids had our own rooms. We lived near friends and were walking distance to school. My older sister had a room that had a specific spot where the ceiling came down at a weird angle and had a small crack in it. We'll go into detail. My room was at the end of the hall and was huge. Two sides of the room had crawl space cupboards big enough for some extra storage and for me and my younger brother to play in. However, it had a closet as well. In that closet, on one of the walls was a crayon scribble drawing of a monster. That's what we thought anyway. The whole house had somewhat of an eerie vibe, but not so much you'd notice it all the time. One day, my brother and I were playing hide and seek in my room, and he ended up having a seizure in the closet with the monster. His first one. And to this day, I believe that he only had them at this house. Sometime later, my brother and I snuck into my older sister's room. She had a computer, and we wanted to play Oregon Trail. Yes, black screen, great animation, that's how old I am. And we got a weird feeling, and both of us look at the crack in her wall. We decided somehow that there were people living in the crack in the wall, and that we should write notes to them and push them through the wall. Weird, right? A five and six year old scribbling on paper and thinking people live in the wall. But we kept this up the entire time we lived there. One time my brothers and I were playing in the crawl space cupboard thing, playing with our new imaginary friends. And once we came out of there, our hands and only our hands were covered in a blue ink like substance. So these friends we dubbed the blue people. But now on to the spooks. One night I had been sleeping in my room and I remember waking up suddenly because I heard something. I sat upright in bed for a few minutes looking around and didn't see anything. 
but then out of the corner of my eye I see something move. I look directly at the closet. Something was there. Slowly a black shadow on the ground started to appear at the base of the closet. After a few seconds, I realized it was a hand that was black as night. A few seconds later it started to come out even more, an arm, and as soon as I saw the beginning of a shadow head, I jumped out of my bed and booked it downstairs to my parents' room. I was screaming that there was someone in my room and crying. My dad jumped up as fast as he could, grabbed something to bring with him. I think it was a huge flashlight or a bat. It was a blur. He searched the whole room, made all the other kids get up, searched in their rooms, and we all ended up sleeping in their room. Ever since that day, I've seen a tall black figure, not all the time either, just at random moments. I feel like it's the same one from the brown house, and that it follows me. Seven years ago, I lived in a two-story farmhouse. It was built in 1908 and was both large and old. I was packing clothes and putting them in a small, unused bedroom. I was wearing my MP3 player that had three-fourths battery life. I was on my fourth trip and was hauling a load of shirts on hangers. It occurred to me the closet was empty too. Perfect. I'll just hang them back up in there. The closet was almost a second room. It had a short, glossy wooden door. The area was three times long as it was wide, with hardwood floors. The lacquer still smelled, even though I'm sure it was fresh a hundred years ago. I ducked fully inside and thought, this is a weird little place to be. Suddenly the music doubled in volume and changed to something that wasn't music. It was like, I'm not even sure, rapid nonsense. Fast electronic babbling, it scared the hell out of me and I flew straight out, looked at the MP3 player and it was suddenly dead. I'm a pretty rational guy. That MP3 player could sometimes show more battery than it actually had. It had done it before, and maybe the sounds were some sort of malfunction before shutting down. I don't really believe in ghosts, but I'm telling you it shocked and frightened me to the core. My skin felt electric for an hour after, and I've never felt comfortable in that room again. When I was eight or so, I was laying in bed trying to get to sleep. My closet door was ajar, just enough so that a person could slip in sideways if they were skinny, and I could see all the way to the opposite corner inside because of the position of my bed. I roll over, and I'm struck with fear. I see a shadow figure all black. He looked like he had a trench coat and matching fedora hat. He looked at me, smiled somehow without a mouth, and disappeared into the back of the closet. This was not a big closet by any means, so I was frozen with fear. I stared at the closet all night until my mother came to get me for school. She was pissed that I stayed up and let me stay home to sleep. Even after telling her what happened, she of course didn't believe me. Fast forward to 16 and I was in my room. It was 2am, a weekend, and I had my lights on and the TV was going. Everyone else was asleep. I'm at the foot of the bed, and my back is directly in front of the closet door, which is shut, when I hear a noise. I turn around to see the closet shimmy open. Now, my closet needs force to open and close, as the hinges are not leveled. You need to lift the door for it to open. So I'm staring at the door open itself just a little. I'm frozen with fear. Remembering the time I was eight, when I watched the door creak open a little more. Then one more time. I resolved myself to run and shut it, which I did with no resistance. I told my parents again the incident the next day. They said because I have a window in the closet, the wind opened it. I've been in that closet when it's storming outside. Not the faintest breeze, and it's painted shut. No one believes me. But I still hate this closet. I'm going to tell you about the time I spent living in my dad and stepmom's house. I'm 25 now and married, but the story takes place from 4 to 20 years old. Please note, my sister is a medium, 
a good one at that, but I won't really touch on that here. This is only one of the many stories I have about the house. The first time I got nervous in my new home was when I turned six. I was helping my dad cook dinner, and he asked me to get my sister as it was time to eat. I waddled down the hallway and went to open our bedroom door, only to hear her talking and giggling. I opened the door slowly to see her brushing her doll's hair while talking. Thinking maybe she too had pretend friends, I asked her who she was talking to. She answered and smiled. The little girl in the closet. I took it as her meaning the doll, because that's where it was. Regardless, I told her the food was done, and the night proceeded as normal. This proceeded to occur for a while. A few years later, I just ignored it, and my parents didn't believe me until they caught her doing it. Suddenly, I wasn't so weird. From talking to no one, my sister progressed to sleepwalking. Usually, she would go to the bathroom and would just stare at herself in the mirror, eyes wide open, but there was no one home. My dad sleeps incredibly light, and would wake up when she passed his door, and tell her to go back to bed after a while. She never once would say a word. I mentioned the sleepwalking because by age ten I was terrified of the house. Every night I would cry when I stayed there, and I told my dad that someone was walking the halls, or that someone was in the house. He would just tell me it was my sister. Or just the creaking of an old house. Little did I know. Once we moved out, he would come to tell me he had heard it too. It scared him, and it wasn't my sister. Time passed, and I moved into my brother's old room. My dad built an extra room in the basement, and my brother moved down there so that he wouldn't have to be next to his annoying younger sisters. So when I was moving into the room, I was clearing out anything he left. Sweeping and generally cleaning what was needed. While I did the closet last, I opened up this tiny closet, and on the top shelf was a globe. I figured it was my brother's, so I went to ask him. It wasn't. It wasn't my dad's either. I went to my stepmom. She said she'd found it when she moved in, and she had forgotten about it. Not really caring at this point, I put it back. I didn't use the top shelf anyway. For a long time, only small things would happen: the feeling of being watched, the sound of footsteps or giggling, and general unease. Maybe an open cabinet, on the offhand, or a door slowly opening. Until I was eighteen, that is, when I moved in for the summer because my mum worked out of state for a time. I remember one night I heard a door open, as I was nearly asleep. Figure it was my dad doing his good night checks. I stayed in my loopy state. I felt something brush my hair back, and then walk away, and the door closed. I brought it up at breakfast and said, "I knew you still checked on us at night, Dad." He looked up and back down at his paper and said, "No, I don't. You're old enough." I laughed and told him I heard him. I had felt him touch me. He stopped and slowly looked up at me. My smile slowly fell, and I looked to my sister for support, and she went white as a sheet. I looked back at my dad, now feeling nauseous, only for him to tell me, "Lauren, I wasn't home last night. I left right after dinner for work. You know that." I felt ill. Someone or something had touched me, caressed me, even. It hadn't felt evil, loving, almost longing. My dad left. And my sister took me aside to talk. She told me she had a dream last night where she found a guy in my room standing over me, looking at me longingly. She said she got the feeling I resembled his wife and that it saddened him. So what did we do? We set up a camera. We videotaped for weeks until one night you heard and saw my closet door slightly creep open on its own, until suddenly the screen went black. And the rest of the video was nothing but blank static. I never felt quite right in that room, but that made me feel like I was an animal in a zoo for something or someone. After that, I'd take more notice of things like my dog refusing to enter or stay in my room, or they'd sleep on top of me, and I'd wake up to them snarling at night. 
my lights would flicker and my radio was suddenly cut out. Luckily, I moved to college shortly after, and due to family issues, we moved while I was gone. I went to school at a small private women's college in Pennsylvania. It was a pretty campus in the middle of a reasonably urban environment. A few of the dorms and admin buildings had been specifically built for the college, Most were carved out of old mansions that had been donated by wealthy industrialists. The area was something of a cluster of millionaire mansions. Three or four of those old houses had been converted into housing. They were in pretty heavy demand, although they could be shabby. They were far bigger than most of the cookie-cutter dorm rooms, and they often sported bonus additions. An extra study room, a tiny partial bathroom that was once a powder room. And my junior year, I was hoping to live with my two friends, Marsha and Selena. I was never very lucky with the housing lottery, but Selena was. Her luck held, and we were early enough to get a huge triple with a walk-in closet and powder room. There was even a regular closet for me. I was never very tidy, and the other girls were very glad to keep my mess contained. One Sunday night, early that semester, I'd been dragged to a late mass in the chapel by a friend who was far more religious than me. I was raised Catholic, but as soon as I left my mother's household, I switched to agnostic and stopped attending mass. I was devout compared to Selena, who fancied herself a bit of a Wiccan, and Marcia, who didn't recognize it unless it was part of the physical world. As a result of my unplanned excursion, I found myself behind on a paper due early the next day. This was not uncommon. I was typing away while Marsha and Selena went to bed early in preparation for their 8am classes. We all had small lamps for late nights, just enough light to finish a last minute assignment. I said my good nights, promising that I'd turn the light out soon. One of my quirks since I was a kid was an inability to sleep in a room with any open doors. Selena used to give me crap, but they were both used to me checking the door locks, my closet door, the bathroom door, and the walk-in closet before I settled in for the night. It's a thing from when I was a kid and believed that something lived inside closets. Some book about the bogeyman I read when I was way too young, no doubt. That night, once I finished my homework, I used the bathroom did a little path of door check and then climbed into bed, yawning and was tired. I fell asleep quickly and it felt like I began dreaming immediately. I've been burdened by the ability to remember dreams in general. This is infinitely cooler when it's a badass action sequence involving me zooming around in winged sandals than when I am, let's say, watching my boyfriend fall in love with other girls or me lost in the middle of the forest. Well, that night I was standing in the middle of the walk-in closet, no clothes to be seen, faced with a black shadow hanging from the ceiling. It was 15 years ago, and I can still remember the weird quality of the blackness. I couldn't explain it until recently when I saw Vanta Black paint. I recognized the same quality of velvet dark that absorbs any light it touched. It moved silently down, vaguely humanoid, but the neck tilted too far to the side. In my dream, I backed up, feeling waves of what I can only describe as evil. I've never been in the presence of something that felt so tainted and ugly before or since. As I backed away, it followed, extending a hand and beckoning me forward with its finger. I knew that if it touched me, something bad would happen, and I backed up until I hit the door. I woke up gasping, wanting to scream but couldn't make more than a squeak. I was frozen in place, either by the dream or just by the sheer fear of the evil. It was probably only a minute, but I finally rolled over onto my side. The headboard of my bed was against the wall, where the walk-in closet was, and it was about four feet away from the closet door. It sounds like such a non-issue, if it wasn't for my habit of checking the doors. The closet door was wide open, not only a crack, Not something that could happen from a draft and an unlatched door. Wide open. And it was the only time that ever happened in nine months. 
I was around 18 years old when it happened. One night I was asleep when I was startled awake by a super loud high-pitched screeching noise. It sounded like a five-year-old girl shrieking at the top of her lungs in terror. The way my room was oriented had the top of me facing the closet, which was always open, and I sleep in the pitch darkness and silence. I immediately jumped out of my sleep. I was laying on my side slash front, so I wound up in a push-up-like position and oriented my eyes where the sound came from, which had me staring straight into my open closet. I stayed frozen for a few seconds thinking to myself, what in the world was that? I must have dreamt it, it sounded so real though. I guess it was one of those half away, half dreamy things. I had had moments in the past where I'm half asleep and would hear my name or a family member's voice say something and startle me, but it's always been that half asleep and startled to dream, but still aware of your surrounding state you can sometimes be in. This was different, but that was the closest thing to an explanation I could come up with. I got my adrenaline pumping, I guess because I was immediately wide awake and shook but I had work the next day, so I calmed myself down and told myself to go back to sleep. After all, I am an adult. Not ten seconds into calming myself down and closing my eyes, it happened again. Exactly the same. A super loud, high-pitched, five-year-old shrieking bloody murder at the top of her lungs. This time, though, I'm not anywhere near asleep, as I had just settled myself back down. There was absolutely no way I was dreaming or hallucinating from being half asleep this time. In that moment, I unlocked my superpower. Turns out I'm able to move at the speed of light. I was out of bed, through the closed door and down the hallway so fast my feet barely touched the ground. Out of my bedroom, down the hallway and straight into my mum's room to scream at her that there was something in my closet. I'm a grown adult man, running into my parents' room in the middle of the night in nothing but boxes, shouting that there's something in my room. My mum and I went back to the room and looked around and inside the closet. Nothing. I would sleep with my bedroom door open and hallway lights on for a solid week after this. I was working with my older brother at the time, so the next day I asked him what kind of animal would make a loud noise that sounds like a little girl screaming bloody murder. He apparently thought I was telling a joke because his reaction was to swing his gaze over to me and shout, an ostrich? Followed by holding a big grin on his face in anticipation of the punchline. My response, there was an ostrich trapped in my closet last night, I guess. I then told him what happened, which would prove to be a mistake. I spent the next month getting hazed by him and our other construction workers about the little girl I kept tied up in the closet. It never happened again, but freaks me out every time I think about it. I've told this story to various people over the years, and no one has ever come up with a good explanation. The most common conclusion people come up with was a hallucination or dream while being half asleep, but I was absolutely 100% awake and alert on the second scream. My parents divorced when I was 10, and my dad remarried and moved into a new house about two years later. Yeah, I know. Moved on real quick. His new house was a rancher built in the late 70s in a quiet court. I moved in with my dad and stepmom when I was 18, so my stepmom and dad had been there a few years without me and didn't experience anything. My sister, six years younger, would stay with us twice a week and every other weekend. We both had our own rooms, and the house was set up like a regular household. Everyone had their own room. There was a sitting room with a finished basement, and numerous pictures of everyone on the walls throughout the house. My dad and stepmom did a great job of trying to make our two-family life feel like normal. This is where things get weird. My room and my sister's room shared a wall. Our closets were back-to-back. The last weekend of each month, usually when my sister was staying with us, there would be a loud scratching going up and down our shared wall. Like, deep scratching. It got to the point where I could time when it would happen. It would start at what sounded like 
in the wall of the basement below our rooms and worked its way up our floor moving back and forth on the shared wall in our closets. The basement was an area I would stay and hang out in the most. I was a waiter at the time and would come home late after finishing a shift in through the side door, entering through the basement to not wake up my dad and stepmom. I would never sleep down there, ever. I'd always get an uneasy feeling being down there for about an hour, putting it around 3 to 3.30 a.m., and I would literally bolt upstairs to bed. Well, this last night, the scratching happened. The most intense time. Items on the dresser were shaking, and the dresser was up against the same wall, and pictures on the wall fell off. My two guitars that were hanging on the wall fell off right in front of my door, almost landing in front of the door as to block me from leaving. I got out my rosary and started praying right away. And after, I felt less scared. I turned the TV and my nightstand light on and fell asleep. My sister was a heavy sleeper, like I was, but had never been awoken by this. After her weekend visit was over, she went back to my mum's house where she officially lived. My mum texted me a few days later, saying she was acting different, and her laugh and sometimes her voice were different. They had a deeper tone, and she was using extremely offensive language, which wasn't like her. The very next week, my sister was admitted to a mental institution for threatening to harm herself. My stepmom is an atheist, and my dad is somewhat of a non-believer. My mum is very religious and spiritual like I am. I've always been somewhat sensitive to experiences, but this is the only super negative one like this. Eleven years later, my sister has gone through a wide variety of therapists and been on different medications to help her mental state. She is now becoming more and more like her old self. I know certain things like to pry on the weak-minded, at the time she was 13, going through a split household, puberty, and about to start high school. Based on what I've just said, does anyone think this could have been from a darker presence? When I was maybe six or seven, I got this Mario Kart RC car for Christmas. What happened was that we got one of Mario, but when I tried to use it, it didn't work. I was pretty sad, but my mum said that we can go back to the shop and get another one, so we went, and we asked for a replacement. However, all of the Mario ones were out of stock, but they said there was a Yoshi one still in stock, so we got that one instead. The cart actually worked, and I was happy that I at least got it over nothing. Eventually, everything was fine. I would always leave it in my wardrobe, but in the morning I would wake up to it being right next to my bed. And I know this wasn't part of a prank, because my mum told me one night that she heard the sound of it driving around. She went to go check it, and the RC remote was at the top of our wardrobe completely out of my brother's reach, or mine. And it wasn't even on. It was just the car that was on. She ended up turning it off and going back to bed. But the Yoshi toy kept appearing next to my bed. We always closed the wardrobe, and when the toy appeared next to my bed, the wardrobe would still be closed. Eventually, my mum gave it to her boyfriend, and it would stay on a shelf, just staring. Nothing ever happened, with the toy being at her boyfriend's house. But whenever I looked at it, it would just haunt me of the memories that I had with the toy. This isn't the only experience we've had, as my mum has other experiences of us being asleep and hearing footsteps in our room, or some sort of shadow entity in the hallway. But this is one that I experienced and will never forget. My name is Torin, and to give you some background, I believe the apartment that I was living in was haunted. My bedroom was downstairs and had a closet. Then that closet led to another door to the basement. The same level was equally terrifying. Some things to note that were strange about the place. In the laundry room, there were bullet holes in the walls. Quite often, 
I would hear bangs and knocks coming from that room, even when there was no laundry. Common things that would happen around me. Doors would open and close randomly. In the bathroom, the door would just open and there would be no one there. Walking up and down the stairs, it would feel like nails or fire on your feet. I heard my name being called by voices I didn't recognize. I would constantly see different people. I would give these people nicknames. There was a doorman, a tall figure that would stand right behind my front bedroom door, who would stare at me and smile. There was an alien dude, a creepy short thing that looked like a messed up version of E.T., who would be in the corner of my room by my closet, who would move closer and closer to my bed every night, with very creepy breathing. Every time something strange or scary happened, I heard my heartbeat, and naturally my body was sensing that something was going on. Things got so bad I had to tell people about this. The whole time I lived there, I was between five and nine, so the day I told people about it, two things happened. The first is that for the rest of the days, I saw faces anywhere it was dark. The second thing was my bed got shaken. To give context, I had a bunk bed. I was so scared of things happening, I thought I would be safer sleeping on the top. So while on the top of the bunk bed, I heard my name being called out from the closet. The bed was shaken so much I got tossed out of my bed. I was terrified from that point on. Fortunately, we moved out shortly after. Another thing that happened is one night I saw a doorman. He would always close the door, but while I was watching him do it, I heard something on my bottom bunk. Then I heard a dog panting. Then I hear another creak and I look down and there are two indents on the bed. One that looked like a man and another like a dog. I didn't see the doorman after that one incident. There was also a time I was playing some games in my room, sitting in front of my TV, at the other end of the closet. I tried to be as far away from the closet as possible. Then the power went out and it was pitch black. Suddenly I hear the creak and the closet door open, and I felt hands all over my body. When the light came back on, my body was halfway through the door. Both the closet door and basement door were open. I couldn't do anything but panic and scream. I ran upstairs, then I had to go to school. But it was quiet for the rest of the day. There was also something that happened at Christmas. We had just finished opening presents, we were going over to the family, so I ran downstairs to go put my socks and shoes on. I ran so fast that I ran straight into my dresser, and I think I knocked myself out. The next thing I know, I'm in the basement slash closet. My parents came to get me confused as to why I was there. I didn't know. I was just terrified. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. Well done for making it to the end of the video. If you did, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram because it really boosts my ego. Yeah, I'm joking. It would be nice though, in case I message, put out any important stuff, I guess. Um, closet stories, I've been meaning to do this video for a while. It was definitely a fun topic. There was one story that I didn't get a chance to record because it was a bit too long. Um, so that'll have to be for another installment. But I hope you liked today's video nonetheless. It was a different topic. Um, interesting, I really liked recording it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, of course, if you're still awake at this point. Um, don't forget to download our app, obviously, if you're new here. So yeah, um, I think that's it. No real big announcements, really. I'd just like to give, as always, a huge thanks to the members and Patreons whose names are on screen. Your support really does mean a hell of a lot, so thank you. But I think I'm gonna wrap things up here. So for now, Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.